With that said, I'll jump right in. Uh, my name is Jeff Garland. Uh, I've been with DOT for a total of a little over 10 years now. Uh, I've had it in two stints. Those were for eight years uh, in a prior stint from basically 05 to 13, and then back starting uh, right before the pandemic hit. Uh, came back right in 2020 and uh, came back in January and then March, uh, all the COVID stuff happened. So it's been a very interesting last two years. Uh, but big credit to the teams that have been working on the ORD implementation update. There's a lot of work done prior to me coming back to the department in January uh, of 2020, but there's just been with all the challenges we've had around learning to work remotely for the department, all the IT issues we dealt with, uh, we've made a lot of progress, but we've got a lot of work to do. Um, for today, uh, I'm gonna talk about a few things, but one, just give you a quick background on what the ORD implementation update is, uh, what we're doing, some of the anticipated benefits that we continue to learn more about and work towards, um, the true team approach we're taking as a department, and then really moving forward, trying to lay out what is that roadmap? What, what is kind of our current ORD readiness just to map that out? Uh, what is kind of our plan moving forward? And then uh, I would do have uh, Ethan Schwartz and Kyle Nauman and Vasim Beridwala on the um, call as well. Uh, we'll put them on the screen on the Teams meeting here. And Ethan will be presenting, uh, talking about our current workspace that we're developing, uh, some training information, some other pieces. So just to jump right in, if you don't know too much about it, which most people do at this point, uh, Open Roads Designer is the latest edition of Bentley Designer Software. It is where we're moving to as an organization. Uh, certainly NCDOT has been using Bentley for several decades, and this is just the latest uh, round of moving to that modern platform. But unlike changes over the last two or three decades, this is really a big paradigm shift, a big move uh, and a lot of change for our engineers on how we think, just our pure design concepts. Um, also, logistically, Bentley is rolling off their V8i SS2, SS4 support. Um, they still offer the software, of course, and we're using it as a transition. It is still a viable tool set for the department, and we're trying to find the best path to transition off of it eventually and to move solely into the Connect platform and ORD. Little history lesson. I know everyone knows this, but it pretty much blows my mind to think that computers weren't even around 100 years ago. It's only been the last 80 years, really, that you've had that first digital computer developed. But really, it wasn't until the 80s. It's only been 40 years that we've had these personal computers, really, that, at our hands. And now they've morphed into everything around us. The phones we have, the tablets, iPads, every industry is affected by this digital age that we're in. And it's such exponential change. It's only been 40 years since we've had personal computers. Um, so really it was hand drawn up until basically the 90s for the department. So that was like the first big change from that hand drawn to two dimensional design work. And that's been pretty steady for the last 30 years. It's how do you take a three dimensional view and break it down into 2D, as we all know, with plan, profile, cross sections. But I really see the 2020s where all the pieces are in place as far as the technology, the hardware, the software, uh, basically legislation, uh, there's uh, policies. Everyone is really fully immersed in trying to make this modeling work. And the department's moving forward with that Bentley Open Roads designer to do just that. So I mentioned paradigm shift. It's just such a change in mindset, just like that evolution that we took from hand drafted to CAD. It's also this thing where it's 3D model centric. So We've been trained so long to think in flat two-dimensional planning because that's what we've had at our fingertips is we drew plans and then we've been working on modeling for a couple decades now. What does it really look like in a three-dimensional uh, type view? Um, but we've really got things in place to drive that home. So as we all know, that current process is we would do our 2D design workflows. We would develop those plan, profile, cross-section sheets. And then the model is kind of like an afterthought. It was really more of a kind of incidental that we'd kind of piece it all together and we could make models. And that's what we've been doing for a while. The big paradigm shift is we're starting to design and think more in 3D design workflows. And so really within ORD, that's the big difference in the fact that you're designing the model and all the pieces within that. And then as an incidental, we can create 2D flat plan profile cross section sheets from the model but the true hope is, is that it gets down to kind of a single source of the truth because 
we had lots of challenges in the past around the sheets matching the model, but as we move forward and we really generate the sheets from the model, the hope is like that it will stay very uh, uniform as we go to our construction industry and they develop models and have models for their construction purposes. And lots of things around the intelligence, but really it's in uh, the design intelligence store within the graphical elements. And so GPK is no longer really a part of that. So it's really putting it all together. As I mentioned, the modeling evolution, we've been trying to do 3D modeling for decades. Um, it's gotten better and better and better. Um, it's going to be very lifelike for a while now. Um, it's the ability for us to generate with the amount of computing power we have and hardware and software is pretty amazing. Um, so we see lots of benefits to a number of stakeholders, not just the consultants and the designers the, from DOT or private engineering firms, but also our co contractors, our construction industry, DOTs, agencies, and even our citizens, I think could all benefit from moving to this 3D model centric type work with ORD. We're all fully aware of some of these benefits, but just to go over a few of them for the consultant side, we're really looking that you can really immerse yourself in the design, really see it as you're getting into this from the early stages through all the different design periods and really accelerate that design workflow. It really gives you to see the terrain, model and analyze it in a much quicker uh, fashion than we have in years past. Um, just a lot of the features that are coming forth with this software. And one of the more exciting things about it is the subsurface analysis, really clash detection that we're seeing in the subsurface, really in a, as we move forward and really try to improve our data flow and our data metrics that we have with construction design as we do this civil uh, design work, is how can we avoid crash, de de uh, clash detection in the very beginning? And that's really what we're trying to do. So with digital as-builds, with working more of a, kind of start to finish understanding of this digital domain that we have, could we really reference in that at the beginning? So much of it is guesswork still at this point. So much is really going out in the field and testing over and over and over again. It would be nice to have that kind of future where we really are starting to get all this stuff documented, not only above the surface, but below the surface as well. And obviously this is going to benefit our construction industry in a number of ways. They've had the technology out there for automated machine guidance for a long time. They use it for sure. It's a huge cost savings for them, certainly around the grading models and everything else they're doing. Um, but the sooner we can get to just a releasing a model to build rather than plans where they have to generate their model and go from there, there's a lot of efficiencies to be gained there. Um, they have the technology. We're trying to start with the end in mind. We're working closely with AGC and the construction industry to really understand how do you want to receive this? How is the best way to get this model out there to you? So this is an ongoing collaborative process, which I'll talk more about as far as our team approach. Again, all the equipment is there. Everything's a computer these days. Even the, the, the industry that's just doing most of the construction, like I said, it has so many computers involved with what they do. It, they're ready for it. Um, from DOTs and agencies, just to be very blunt in a couple different ways, a lot of our legislature, a lot of decision makers, our agencies that lead stuff aren't necessarily engineers. It's so much easier to understand a visual, a three-dimensional representation to understand truly what are the impacts, what will it look like, what will it mean moving forward. Um, and as we develop these, it really enables a greater conversation at the beginning. If, if you look at these 3D layouts, it really will help understand maybe project costs, uh, how we can do the advanced to approve 3D model to the detailed design phases that we go through. And really that digital tent twin technology I noted, that's really where we're trying to go to really improve our asset management functions down the line too. Lots of impacts for DOTs, agencies, our true decision makers, if you will. And then there's always the money factor. Like I said, I, I've got an MBA background. I like the kind of macro economy of things. But in essence, this graphic is all it's trying to depict is, as we all know, if we can catch some of these clash detection and some of these design changes early on during the design process by being able to quickly and readily see it in a 3D model and see all the different pieces feed into it, the changes up front are minimal. There's hardly any cost. And we say I have so much cost savings at the beginning. 
rather when you get in the actual execution, operation, construction. As we all know, if you hit a fiber optic line in the construction process or you figure out you have to move a, a end bin on a bridge, I mean, those things out in the field are so costly in so many ways that that is the hope that we can really catch it early on and it'll save taxpayer dollars and a tremendous uh, amount. Um, and for our citizens, again, most of our citizens are not engineers. They don't necessarily understand all the impacts from looking at our traditional public hearing maps, trying to understand all the different things. What does it really mean for me in my backyard? What does it mean to my community and my home? What does this really mean? And I think I can foresee a very foreseeable future where we may just have the model up on our website, you know what I'm saying, DOT, and here's our, if you want to understand what this is going to do, just click on here. We have augmented virtual reality, different VR technology. This is amazing. Uh, if anyone has children these days, they're, they're getting just video games and gifts all day that they are in the visual world, in, in the model, and just using that same technology where you can see what would it actually look like out where we're going to build this. What would it mean to not see my home out here, but to see this road coming in beside it? Um, so I see a lot of value to our citizens as well as we move towards this. And again, the ability to render these in a 3D realistic is just going to go a long ways as far as really to help our understand what the projects mean. So to touch upon our team approach, uh, again, I am so much just a facilitator. Like today, I facilitate all the discussions by the subject matter experts. This is what I do pretty much day in and day out for the Department of Transportation right now. So many people know the ins and outs of the software, their specific uh, areas of design expertise that we have just, uh, there's about a hundred or so folks in our user groups for our working sessions. The CAD coordinators across the Department of Transportation working with NCDIT and then bringing in a number of private engineering firms to help as we go along because everyone has different experiences using 3D modeling, using Open Roads Designer, and we're all learning it as we go. In terms of Bentley coordination, just to say it very clear, we are working on a number of software platforms. It's not just in the Connect, Connect platform, it's not just Open Roads Designer. There's the Open Bridge piece, there's Open Rail, Open Ground. Um, we're looking at all these to try and figure out what is that right software mix for the department to really pull all this together. And in that last bullet, long story short, we have two embeds from Bentley working full time with us so that they can basically cross that gap back with the software provider because they have work to do on the software as well. You know what I'm saying? It's not there. There are areas of improvement ongoing that they're trying to figure out as well. So we are helping them help us as far as developing the software. And so we really appreciate them being at the table every day. It's been a long journey, just to put this up here. Uh, we've been talking about ORD since at least 2015, 2016. Uh, we've had so many different kind of runs of trying to understand it. How are we really gonna use it? Um, a lot of planning, testing, and training. But really last year and this year, we're truly getting into the implementation of it. We have pilot projects going on, which I'll talk about now in just a minute. Uh, test projects where we're really using the software and understanding the kind of workflows to work in those type uh, situations from start to finish. Um, moving forward on the big picture of things, we're trying to target maybe 2023, maybe next calendar year or the next to really see what it would look like to maybe have a pilot project where we let the model from ORD rather than the plans, the PDF plans, which we've historically done for a long time. Now, they'll be probably side by side for a lot of the lettings at first, we're actually talking with NC Bells, trying to understand how do you seal a model? What does that look like? How do you get your engineer's seal on a three-dimensional design? Is it all of the model? Is it pieces of the model? How do you segment that out? Um, and there's a lot of questions around that. Different states are looking at different ways of doing it. But in trying to understand that, we, we've got to, as engineers, we have to stand behind that model if we're going to let it for construction and have expect our construction industry to take that model and go out in the field and start building it. Um, uh, there's gonna be a lot of cross verification and checking on that uh, in the years ahead, but that's what we're working towards. So we're getting there. This is kind of a busy slide, but basically this slide and the next, uh, we've got this red, yellow, green type nomenclature for ourselves, just from a really high level, trying to understand where we're at as far as current ORD readiness, 
because it's different for a lot of our different disciplines, whether it's structures or pavement design, location surveys, everyone uses, it's a cross the board type thing. And these slides will be shared as well, but we're trying to figure out the green generally means that the software and our workflows, we pretty much got those pieces. We understand we, we've got a good way around it. The yellow areas is where eh, we've got some, some workarounds, but for the most part, we're getting to where we can use the software. We've got a really good feel of it, but there are some workarounds we're trying to improve upon. And then the red towards the back end on some of the quantities and the way to do some of the pieces, some of the sheeting we're trying to develop. It's a lot of manual workarounds right now. We don't really have the software in a good spot is where we understand exactly how to use it. So we're hoping to flip all these to green very soon, but this is kind of like our scoreboard, if you will. So it's a really high level look at it, but each unit is different and we're working with all the units to try and really get through this. So again, most of the earlier stuff, as far as the design features and drafting, we feel pretty good with. It's more along kind of the back end, finishing it up. How do we really get the sheeting out? How do we truly let a project and get those designs out using ORD? So that's just kind of a quick snapshot of what all that is. The moving forward, as I mentioned, this year, really a lot of the focus is on our test and pilot projects a lot of testing still. Um, what we're doing when I say test and pilot projects for nomenclature, test projects are ones that we've already let in the past. We've already designed using V8i, SS2, SS4, and we as a department are going back and trying to see if we use ORD, can we replicate what we designed before? Where are the differences? Where are some of the challenges we're running into? So it is truly testing of the software. And when I mentioned pilot, projects. These are true projects out in the field where we have private engineering firms using ORD as much as we can. There are still some workarounds and some units aren't fully there, but to basically generate our plans to let. And we're having some of those come this year where we're letting projects using ORD. They're smaller projects, but we're still walking through the steps and we're getting there. <coughs> as I noted, out years, we really want to try and see what those would look like to have a target for piloting model delivery for construction. So that's part of the end goal, but we are at this point, ORD is still gonna let plans generating two-dimensional PDF plan profile cross-section type plan sets. For those test and pilot projects, we have several underway around the department right now. Um, a lot of the units have picked test projects that have very specific project qualities that obviously if they're in hydro or if they're in geotech or if they're in structures that meet theirs. Um, and then the pilot projects, a lot of those at this point are much smaller projects, kind of some uh, improvement projects here and there, but a lot of the divisions. Um, but we're, it's, it's a benefit to everyone for us to go through those processes because we're learning as we go. And what we're looking for is those folks to step in and do these pilot projects. And I'll talk about those opportunities here in a minute. <coughs> this is a list of uh, just a quick snapshot of some of the current ones uh, where we have live pilot projects, some of the firms that are helping us, kind of where they're at, what stages, and what we're looking to test. Um, some of these smaller ones, I mean, we should be getting to let on some of these this spring and some later this year. Um, we're constantly looking for more opportunities to figure out how to work together in doing these pilot projects because the software's there. We, we've just got to... We're not looking to flip the switch in its entirety at this point. Just to talk about it very clearly, DOT got to a point last summer in July 1 where between our location and surveys, our photogrammetry, we could really generate some good base mapping files with ORD. But where we're doing a lot of our challenges, if we went back to the slides talking about the software readiness, a lot of this is around hydraulics and the geotech unit at this point based on some of the software readiness from Bentley. Bentley's fully aware of what we're trying to do and they're trying to help us improve upon getting ready for these uh, impl uh, implementations. But there is some work to do still from their side. For private engineering firms that have ORD experience, whether you're using it in other states, whether you're starting to use it in North Carolina, we welcome having those initial meetings on projects. We're trying to figure out which ones to convert over to ORD. Uh, obviously, new projects, we we're definitely looking to get those started out of the gate with ORD. But as we all know, the majority of our projects out there these days have been around for a while. They've had some sort of preliminary work done in V8 ISS2, SS4. 
depending on the stage, whether it's been on the shelf for a while, coming back off. Should we finish it up in SS2, SS4? Should we finish up in ORD? Do we convert it over? And that's one of the biggest questions we'll have for a while because from the big picture, for our taxpayers, whether we design it with a crayon or with V8I or, SS or ORD, at the end of the day, they're looking for roads and bridges to operate. When can we cut ribbons? When can we uh, impact their communities? So we don't want to unnecessarily spend taxpayer dollars where we don't have to. So SS2, SS4 is still a viable tool in our tool shed. It still does the work. A lot of our firms know how to use it. We know how to use it and check it. So we don't want to just take that and throw it away and not use it. So we're trying to figure out the right transition time. So it's a hard question because I get asked all the time, I was like, so when is the department switching over? When are we using all ORD? And it's not an easy answer. Uh, I, I want to make sure that when we do have that switch, that all the units are fully capable and prepared to use it, that the software readiness from Bentley is fully in place, and that it's a smooth transition so we're not spending any extra money that we don't need to for our taxpayers. Um, so we're trying to figure out what that time frame is. So, but at this point, if you have as a firm familiarity with ORD, your the project has some sort of, uh, it's not on a critical path, it's not a detailed one where you have some floats, some ability to kind of learn the software with us as we go. These are good candidates for pilot projects for ORD. Uh, we would welcome that. And I would highly suggest talking to your project manager or there's tons of information at the end of this to talk back through all our ORD working groups. I facilitate a number of these conversations. We would welcome that work. Um, so I mentioned conversion. Um, this is what we're looking into a lot right now. What does it mean? What would it look like if just all of a sudden mid project, we're like, okay, whatever you've done, stop. We're going to switch over. We're going to use ORD to develop the rest of the plan sets. Do you have to go backwards? Can you just start there and just an easy button to fix it? Move it in the new software. What will you lose? What we have to replicate? And so it's not a very straightforward question. <coughs> we're finding because there, it depends on the project. As I mentioned with project complexity, depending on how these are set up, the magnitude of the work around the interchanges, some of the pieces we've done, also, which project phase you're in. Um, and we're really looking for some just in general that have not necessarily a tight schedule, but one that we can have a little flexibility. And then we get into what would it look like? What's a minimal, what's kind of a moderate, and what's a full-blown conversion look like? So just talking through those, some of them, it make more sense. And like I said, we've looked at some of these examples, and we're not dead set on this, but... We're trying to understand, like I said, if you're far enough along and say SS2, SS4 is just gone completely, there's no more V8I, you have to use ORD. Some of it, if you kind of go back and really take those base mapping files and get out of the gate from the beginning, it's almost quicker than trying to convert it because you run into all these kind of errors and cross things you need to check. It's almost better just to start over in some ways. And that's a challenge. And so like so we're trying to figure out how to frame that, what to do so more to come on that, but just know that that's going to be one of the bigger questions for the department in the years ahead is how do we easily and readily convert our existing work that's been done? Or if it comes off the shelf, say three years from now or five years from now, if there was work done, do you just start over? Is that really the answer? If, we're, if we don't have the software, what is the right decision as a department for our taxpaying citizens? And so we... I welcome any input on that. We talk about this all the time. So I, I'm really looking for that collaborative input from industry on that because we're trying to make the right decisions. So it's, it's been a challenge. So with that said, I'm going to, from a technology standpoint here, I'm going to mm -hmm. shift over here. And uh, Ethan, can you hear me uh, on this stuff? Uh, if you take yours off mute. Let's see here. Let me go back into here. So we've got this. All right. Ethan, can you hear me okay? I can hear you now, Jeff. Yeah. Excellent. And everyone can hear you. So let me, uh, so everyone, I just want to, on the screen, let me see if I share this screen. Well, I, I won't show. So they're not looking at you. They're just looking at the presentation right now. And you guys can okay. still see the presentation. Yeah. So uh, on the microphone in the air, we have uh, Ethan Schwartz. He is our Bentley Embedded Expert uh, Advisor for ORD. We also have Kyle Nauman on, and we also have Vasim Baradwala that's uh, working on our already working groups. And um, 
Uh, are you sharing your slides now? Ethan? Yeah, I went ahead and shared mine if that's okay. Um, yeah, well, let me just do this then. Hold on. I'll stop sharing mine. Let me do this real quick. And then they can actually see you too. So I will go to this. Hit escape. Bear with me. So what's on the screen? Let me go to here and we hit escape. All right, for whatever reason, they're not seeing yours, but they're seeing mine. So we're on that first slide. So let's just go okay. with that. All right, uh, today I wanted to talk to everyone about workspaces. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Ethan Schwartz. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the Bentley Embedded Advisor for North Carolina DOT. I've been here for about a year working with the folks at North Carolina on their workspaces. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. Uh, I want to start off by defining some of the terminology that you may be hearing. Uh, then I want to talk about where you can find the latest workspace for ORD, uh, what the difference is between a managed and unmanaged workspace. We talk about those a lot, so I want to make sure we know what the difference is. Uh, then we'll take a look at where you can get the unmanaged workspace and how you load it up on your machine. Uh, we'll talk about some self-paced training courses where those are available, uh, both North Carolina specific and in general for Open Roads Designer. And lastly, we'll talk about where you can get some help from North Carolina DOT. So I'm going to jump right in and let's start talking about what is a workspace. You may hear that term thrown around a lot, but what does it mean? In Open Roads Designer, we call the collection of the configurations and standards that the users rely on to create their designs the workspace. All right? And the, the configurations part points to where the standards and settings reside. Then the standards and settings are used, are a preset for North Carolina design projects. Uh, these are the settings that allow the users to design an Open Roads Designer while keeping things within NCDOT's parameters. And finally, to create a set of North Carolina DOT plans. The same work set, or same workspace is also used for Open Bridge Designer and Modeler. Uh, the structural unit here has worked up a portion of the North Carolina workspace to cover their specific needs with Open Bridge software. I think Jeff mentioned each of the disciplines within North Carolina DOT as a CAD coordinator who's been working on the standards and will continue updating those standards for that unit's portion of the workspace. And then CAD services is responsible for the configuration end of it, which again points to the standards and settings and CAD services will maintain the general North Carolina DOT standards that are shared amongst most of the units. Do you want to go ahead and switch to the next slide, Jeff? Yep, we're there. Uh, Next thing we want to look at is how do you know if you're using the correct version of the software? Well, if you go to the North Carolina DOT CAD services webpage, you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll find a link to the NCDOT CAD software versions. You click on that link, and it's going to take you to a PDF of the latest versions North Carolina is using for their design projects. And we'll skip to the next slide where we'll show what those versions are. And as you can see, there's still some of the older projects or older versions of software out there for the older projects. That's just to finish up previously started projects for the state. All new projects are going to be started in Open Roads Designer version 10.10.01.03, which is the current version we're using now. Additionally, all projects are being moved to or being created in ProjectWise Explorer. So you'll want to download version 10.0.3.435, sorry, 453, as listed here, of the ProjectWise Explorer client from Bentley. That way you can access your work on, you can access your work and work on your NCDOT projects. If you haven't yet, or if you need to move a project to project-wise, the project manager should contact dot.pwsupport at ncdot.gov. By working on your projects in project-wise, you'll get the benefit of using the managed workspace. 
So the next slide, we're going to talk about what is the managed versus the unmanaged workspace. When we talk about a managed workspace, what do we mean? Well, the managed workspace is just what it sounds like. When projects are accessed through ProjectWise, all North Carolina DOT standards are automatically applied to the DGN files. No workspace installation is necessary on the user's part. The way it works is the first time you open a file, it's going to download the latest version of the North Carolina DOT workspace to your local machine. And ProjectWise will do all the work of keeping those standards up to date as you move forward with your design. Not all the projects have been associated with the managed workspace at this point. So if you're working on a previously project, previously started project, excuse me, that does not have a managed workspace associated, please contact CAD services so we can help with making that connection. So what's an unmanaged workspace then? Well, we are aware that there are going to be some situations where project work is going to be done outside of project wise for various reasons. For those situations, NCDOT will provide an unmanaged workspace that users can download in zip file format from the CAD services webpage, and they can install and manage the workspaces themselves. This zip file, zip file will be updated on a regular basis with any updates the managed workspace has. The user will then have to go out, get the latest version themselves, and swap it out for the old workspace on their local drive. This is not the preferred method of design as the project won't be on project wise. It will be up to the users themselves to make sure all the CAD standards are the, up to the latest version and up to date. So where can I get a copy of this workspace? Well, if you're on project wise, your project is on project wise and you're working on project wise, the good news is the managed workspace is applied as you open the files. Like I said, ProjectWise will download a local copy to your machine. And then as the workspace gets updated on ProjectWise through the CAD managers and CAD coordinators, the software will compare it to what you have locally on your machine and update any files as needed each time you open a design file. It all happens behind the scenes and the user doesn't have to worry about touching any of it. To access all that ProjectWise has to offer, talk to your IT administrator about setting up the North Carolina DOT data source listing and have the project manager set up your access permissions through SharePoint. After that, you should be able to log into the project wise using your Bentley IMS login and see your project listed in the data source. Then it's just a matter of going to the right folder and double clicking on the file to open it. But what if your project is not on project wise yet? If you haven't used ProjectWise yet, please contact CAD services for any assistance. At this point, we encourage everyone to work on all projects through ProjectWise. We know this can't always be the case, so we're going to provide a zip file that people can download and, and install the workspace themselves. Let's take a quick look at how that works. So to find this managed, unmanaged workspace, first thing you need to do is navigate to the CAD services webpage. If you've not been there before, please take a look around. This is a great place to find information and resources for North Carolina DOT project design. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, at the bottom on the right-hand side of the page, you'll find CAD Downloads. This is where you can download the latest NCDOT Connect workspace. The numbers after the name correspond to the version of the workspace and the date on which it was posted to the page. The zip file is updated regularly, and when changes are made to the workspace, oh, I'm sorry, zip file is updated regularly when changes are made to the workspace. So what you'll do is you'll click on that link, and your browser will download the zip file containing the workspace. From there, once you've downloaded the zip file, you can extract it directly to your C drive. If your IT administrator prefers the workspace space be placed somewhere else other than the C drive, you'll need to go into the configuration files and adjust for the new location. It's recommended that the workspace be placed directly on the C drive. The way to do this is to browse to the drive and select it as the folder 
that you want to extract the contents of the zip file to. By hitting that extract button, what you're going to do is you're going to place the needed configuration files and standards where they need to be placed. And some of the files installed with the software will be overwritten with modified versions that are configured for this specific workspace. So it'll go into the program files on your C drive and it'll replace a couple of the Bentley configuration files that are installed with the software. Next slide. Yep. Uh, you should now see the NCDOT Connect Workspace folder on your C drive. When you open Open Roads Designer from any shortcut, cut, and this can be the shortcuts included with the download, or it can be the shortcut in your start menu, you should be able to find the DOT US North Carolina option in the workspace drop down. That's the first of the three drop downs shown on the screen. From there, it should just be a matter of selecting or creating a work set for the project you're designing and picking a role to set your discipline. Now, as a caveat, I will warn everyone here, uh, when you select a new role, and the role is the last of those three drop downs, uh, there's a role for each discipline. If you select a new role, the first time you do that, you'll need to go into a file and then get completely out of the software, go back in with that same role selected and that second time through, it will fully load the role properly. And this has to do with how the configurations are loaded. Uh, they're loaded in a very specific order. So by the time you've loaded that North Carolina workspace, the role is further down that load stack. So you have to get back out and load it from the beginning to get it to load correctly. Uh, this is just a quirk of the software that we're going to have to work around for now. Uh, so anytime you change that role, you'll have to do that. Since the workspace is unmanaged in ProjectWise, the user will have to keep the standards up to date themselves. The steps, for the, user, the steps that the user must take each time they want to update the managed workspace to the latest version are as follows. First step, download that zip file from the CAD services webpage. Before you extract it, we recommend that you delete any current or previous versions of the unmanaged workspace from your computer. At that point then, you'll go ahead and extract the new version from the zip file directly to your C drive. And from there, you can start using the shortcuts either provided in the zip file or any of the shortcuts from the start menu to, use, to access Open Roads Designer. Uh, we do recommend cleaning off the older workspaces uh, to do this, what you'll do is go to your C drive and delete out the ncdot underscore connect underscore workspace folder before you extract that new workspace from the zip file. Uh, the reason we do this is just make sure that all the files are deleted and replaced and that no unnecessary files get left behind from previous versions. Okay, that brings us to where can we find some training? Uh, as you go through and you start using Open Roads Designer, you're going to want to uh, get trained on how the software works, uh, both in general, how does ORD in general work, and how does NCDOT want me to use ORD for their uh, specific projects and their design and standards. So the idea is we want to keep all of these documents in, in uh, one place. So the SEAM has been working for on this training list that's full of all the links you'll need. Uh, and the way to find this is to go, if you go to the CAD services webpage, at the top of the page, there's an Open Roads Designer link. And through that link, you can open the Open Roads Designer webpage. Uh, Again, scroll through, read through everything, great source of information. But towards the, the, I think it's the middle of that page, on the right-hand side, you're going to see a listing for help documents. Uh, this document is listed here. You can click on it, and it'll bring up a list of links that you can use for whatever you're looking for as far as training goes. Uh, we've got links that go back to the Bentley Learn server on there. You can get um, 
Bentley training. We've also got links on there for the unit specific or discipline specific ORD training that's being created now. So keep checking back. This is a live document that's going to be updated regularly. If you find out about other training that's available that we don't have listed, please let us know. We can add that to the list. Uh, but this is going to be a, a good one-stop place for everybody to go where they can find uh, a nice list and links to the training that's available out there. CAD Services is also putting together some live training. Uh, keep an eye out for announcements about that. We've got an ORD 101 training coming up soon. Mm -hmm. I think that's internal training only, though. Uh, there may be videos posted at some point. Right. Okay, and then the last slide here is going to be where do I go for help if things just aren't working the way I'm expecting? Uh, if you need any help along your journey, you can always contact CAD Services with questions. The email address is listed on the page here, cad-sup at ncodot.gov. You can also contact the ProjectWise support group if there's any ProjectWise specific related questions. Again, that address is here on the screen. Uh, and if you need any help setting up ProjectWise projects or moving projects to ProjectWise, the same address will work for you. These emails uh, get sent out to multiple people within CAD services, so really using these email addresses is your best chance of getting the quickest response to your questions and concerns. Uh, if you try and e email people individually or directly, they may be busy with something else, so we really do recommend uh, the support email or the uh, CAD support email or the project-wise support email if you need direct assistance. That's what I've got for now. I'm going to throw it back to you, Jeff. Sure. Uh, I was going to show on the web page where you can find this stuff, but it doesn't sound like my screen's working. Well, I'll tell you what, we can fix that real quick. We got a little time, so let me do this. I'm going to end the slideshow. Okay. And, uh, let me hold share on. my screen then. Yeah, let me turn it. Let's see here. We're going to use this technology. I'm going to go here. All right. They can uh, see you now on the screen and they can see yours. So you're up. Okay. Great. So this is the connect.ncdot.gov page, right? If you go to this initial page here, uh, what you want to do is then go to the resources, right? And in the resources, and this has got all sorts of resources you can look through, on the right side here is your CAD consultants. This is how to get to the CAD services webpage, right? And this is going to be where to access most of your information for ORD. Uh, the Open Roads Designer page, the link is right here at the top. If you click that, this is where you can find the training that I just spoke about. Uh, this is, we've got past events from the NC lugs here also. These link to videos that you can watch. But then you get into the Bentley paths, learning paths, and you get into the unit training. Let me back up a step here. Um, Oh, nope, I still want CAD services. So if you scroll down on the CAD services page to the bottom, this is where you can find your software versions. Then I'll back up. And to the right, then, is where you can find the latest CAD services zip file. Click on that. It'll start downloading. Once that's downloading, you can go through the steps that I mentioned. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. No, fantastic, Ethan. And uh, again, uh, Kyle, uh, Ethan, Basim, thanks for being on. We've got you on the screen. Uh, everybody can see you just fine, and we're seeing your screen, uh, Ethan. So we'll keep that up because you may need okay. to address that. And, sure. and really with that said, uh, I won't go back to the PowerPoint presentation, but basically it's just a wrap-up shows these folks as our panel for what they're doing to help out with the Open Roads Designer Implementation Initiative. Uh, it is a lot of work. Uh, I'll, I'll share the screen at the end of it that just has our email address, our website. Uh, we are looking for any and all help uh, as we go through this process. Uh, each discipline and each unit has been addressing the challenges we go. Uh, Ethan, uh, again, is our Bentley embed, and he's been uh, helping us day in and day out. Uh, Kyle Nauman uh, is with CAD Services, and basically we work very closely with NCDIT on a weekly basis to really try and drive this forward. And Vasim and I, like I said, this is our core focus for the department, is how do we make this statewide 
transition for internal to DOT staff and our partners. Um, and it's a lot. So we welcome any and all help as we go through this. Uh, but with that said, I'll open it up for any questions you may have. And uh, Roger has so graciously uh, offered to help uh, to pass around the microphone uh, so we can have it. But any questions, uh, either for myself and again, Kyle, Ethan, have seen they're on as well. They can help address any questions too. But just to open it up. And I do realize it's the end of the day and we're all tired, so <laughs> it's been a long one. If there are no questions, that's fine too. But if you do think of them, obviously there's a number of ways we can get to um, addressing your questions. But any out there? We got the first question coming, guys, and you should be able to hear it. So with the managed workspace, um, is there any way to opt out of, as you push out the different versions, and you're, you're managing your project on project-wise, is there any way to opt out just in case like it messes up something on the plan submittal or something like that, or is it automatically going to push you and you have no choice? It's a great question. Ethan, did you catch that? I did. Uh, I believe the question was, is there an, a way of opting out of the managed workspace upgrades? Uh, there really isn't. Uh, what we have set up... Uh, So when we started out doing this, we had set up multiple versions of ORD within ProjectWise. So there was a 10.9 workspace, there's a 10.10 workspace. Uh, moving forward, I imagine what's going to happen is as we go through the different versions of ORD, if we upgrade, uh, we will have to keep some of the managed workspaces in current versions not upgrading, and then we will move forward with a separate managed workspaces for different versions, if that makes sense. Uh, the, the big problem there is going to be schema changes between versions. As Bentley upgrades ORD, at some point files can only move forward and not back. So we will have to keep several different versions of managed workspaces going, depending on what level projects are in what level of completeness projects are in. Does that answer your question? I believe so, Ethan. I see some head nods, so no. Okay, good. Thank you for that. Uh, any other questions? And thank you for that. Um, before we wrap up the session for today. Y'all are making it way too easy. I got some really, really smart folks on this panel here. They can, they can really drill in if you got any questions. <laughs> All right. Well, with that said, uh, Ethan, Vasim, Kyle, I really appreciate your time this afternoon for joining uh, uh, VR Teams meeting. I appreciate everyone's time in this room. And uh, like I said, just to share something on the screen real quick from the PowerPoint slide. Um, we've got a number of, this was the kind of the panel slide that I was talking about, but there's a very specific website and a very specific email address here, but you can also just find me as well. I will channel it all into the, the right folks to help. We have resources to help. And so what we're trying to do is get visibility and understanding of what are the challenges? Where are the conflicts? Where are our PEFs running into questions and working with DOT on this? And internally, where are our DOT staff finding the most challenges? So I really am looking for that good communication back and forth, that collaborative nature to help each other out. So with that said, we'll adjourn for today and uh, be sure to grab your uh, PDH uh, forms on the way out. And uh, thank you so much for your participation in the workshop these last two days. Thank you, everybody.